but now he and his loyalist forces would go into an even deeper hiding. Maul assumed that Sidious would still be searching for him, not knowing that the true plan was to leave Maul in place on the Mandalorian homeworld. In the final days of the war, the Grand Army of the Republic would launch the Siege of Mandalore. In order of threats to Palpatine's plans, first would be a rival sith Night Sister alliance, the combined power of Maul, Savage, and Mother Talzin. With that eliminated, the next biggest threat to the Empire's rule would be from the Mandalorians, the war-loving race with thousands of years of independence. The Jedi Order would be alarmed that this secret Sith was still alive and ruling Mandalore, thinking Maul may have been that Sith Master all along, manipulating the entire Clone Wars from this neutral world. Fitting the reports by Obi-Wan, in the invasion would be something that Bo-Katan had asked for. The former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano would receive a warm welcome back to the GAR by the 501st. And as a Jedi General, she and Rex would head the assault on the capital with the 332nd Company, a subsect formed out of the 501st for this mission to take Mandalore. I've chosen to pass over the details of the Siege of Mandalore, as it will be covered in Season 7 of The Clone Wars. The Ahsoka book details much of this final battle, but I thought best not to spoil these parts as many have not read that book yet. But as shown in other lore, suffice it to say Maul would get away, while Ahsoka and Rex went into hiding each knowing the secret, true Sith Master had outmaneuvered the entire galaxy. Maul now only had one ally left, the loyal members of the Shadow Collective. Hiding in the thick jungles and cavernous rocky terrain of Dathomir, Maul would spend the next nine years transforming these criminals into a new organization called Crimson Dawn. Again, a puppet leader would be necessary, and would come in the form of Dryden Vos. Though never reaching the level of the Huts, they were one of the most powerful criminal empires at this time. But when this puppet was killed by Solo and his associates, Maul tells Kira that she has been promoted. What became of this organization is as of yet unknown, but it is clear that the Force had a greater plan for Maul than just Crime Boss. Still intent on discovering a way to get revenge on Sidious, he traveled to the world that started his training as a child, to the ancient Sith world of Malachor. Survivor of Order 66, Kanan Jarrus, his apprentice, and Ahsoka then came to visit the temple. Ezra is separated from them and approached by this mysterious man. Call me Old Master. As the young Jedi is led through the ash-covered battlefront, Maul reveals that he knows of the Inquisitors, that each of them, and their master, are his enemy as well. He reveals that he was a Force wielder, but no Jedi, leading Ezra to call him a Sith, while quickly raising his blade. Maul explains that he is no Sith, and now we learn how he sees things. The Sith took everything from me, ripped me from my mother's arms, murdered my brother, used me as a weapon, and then cast me aside. But this doesn't mean that Maul has rejected the wisdom of Sith teachings. He understands that there is truth in their methods of making one strong in the Force. In the first of the Temple's trials, it requires them to work together. Symbolic of the rule of two, one must lift the first block, and the other the second, and then repeat this throughout a narrow shaft. And while giving his instructions, we see Maul referencing lines in the ancient Sith code that reads, Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion I gain strength. Through strength I gain power. Through power I gain victory. Through victory my chains are broken. The force shall set me free. Your passions give you strength. And through strength you gain power. Meanwhile, on the level above, Kanan and Ahsoka have subdued the Inquisitor named the Eighth Brother and they try to figure out why he was there before they even arrived. Who was he hunting? But you are not expecting us. Who are you after? <laughs> A shadow. Deep inside of the Sith Temple, Maul and his new apprentice have discovered the Holocron Chamber. But again, to access it needs these two to work as one. Ezra calls on the Force to leap across the crevasse, while Maul must also force push him to make it across. And as he grabs the Sith Holocron, the temple comes to life for the first time in over a thousand years, opening up at the peak and raising the central platform. Ezra again must trust his life to Maul, and leaps down to be caught in the forest and pulled up towards the old master. Maul savors this combination of fear and trust in the young Jedi, as he easily could have ripped the Holocron out of his hands and left Ezra to fall into oblivion. Outside the temple, the fifth brother and seventh sister respond to the Inquisitor's SOS call. While inside of the pyramid, Maul hints that he knows about the true power of this Sith installation. Sith holocrons are keys that can open many doors. This temple would later prove to have one of the doors to the world between worlds. One of the most mysterious and powerful tools in the entire galaxy, allowing one to walk through time and alter past and future events. 
Maul seems to have understood this ability, and was hoping to use it to undermine Sidious by attacking him at some crucial point in the past. But for now, the plan is simple, to escape here alive. As they exit the temple, they walk right into the latest battle between light and dark on Malachor. Being a man who has survived it all, suffered through the highs and lows alongside Jedi and Sith allies alike, Maul's response is genuine amusement at this series of events. What fun! <laughs> what fun! <laughs> to prove his alliance with these Jedi, he says that he has given up his Sith title. Darth Maul lives. Formerly Darth. Now just Maul. On this world where he started his Sith training nearly five decades earlier, where his burning hatred for the Jedi would be imprinted, and a passion to bring about the revenge of the Sith, he now found himself fighting in between these two groups, working in line with his own vision. The Inquisitors are terrified to think that he has acquired the Holocron. The Holocron, do you have it? You will find out soon enough. Well, Ahsoka has seen him rise from the shadows before, and calmly asks him what his new plot is. Ma, what game are you playing? An end game, Lady Tano. The ex-Sith uses the logic of his Mandalorian allies during the Clone Wars, said by Vizsla and Bo-Katan. I am the enemy of your enemy now, and I have my own reasons for wanting the Empire to fall, but we have little time. The one they call Vader will be here soon. And goes on to explain that the Inquisitor's fleeing means that they must have called in Vader. Maul knows that Darth Vader is Sidious' latest expendable apprentice. And he tells the Jedi that their ambushing Vader here and now would be the best shot they have at killing the Emperor's second-in-command. He also tells them that they can learn the power of this device by attaching the holocron to the obelisk at the pyramid's peak. And as they ascend, they split up, and are set upon by the Inquisitors. Maul hopes to turn Ezra to the dark side, to strike down the Seventh Sister as she was helplessly being force-choked. But to Maul's anger, the Jedi can't do it. Seeing that a ship is approaching, Ezra is told to rush to the peak. While Maul jumps into the fray, he quickly dispatches the fifth brother, while the eighth brother is forced to his death. When Kanan asks where his apprentice has gone, Maul reveals part of his plan. Where's Ezra? You mean my apprentice? He lunges at Kanan, striking at his head, and although the Jedi pulls away just in time, his eyes are melted by the crimson blade. The pure red of a Sith saber was the last thing Kanan would ever see. Where Maul came here to experience a vision of ancient Sith falling to Jedi blades, this Jedi would forever lose his vision on Malachor. But Maul underestimated how strong this survivor of Order 66 was. On this ancient Sith world, Kanan would have to completely give in to the light side of the Force, let it guide his every action. As Maul went to strike, the Jedi would counter with stunning speed and efficiency, knocking the shadow off balance and hurling him off the edge of the temple. If he could not access the world between worlds, if this temple could unleash the energy of its superweapon, he could kill all of these Jedi and Vader at the same time. And while Ezra unknowingly activated this weapon, Vader would arrive and face off against his old apprentice, Ahsoka Tano. Kanan and Ezra would rip out the holocron, resulting in a full meltdown of the complex. Though this method of attacking Sidious was lost, Maul would commandeer the Inquisitor's TIE fighter and escape Malachor, while Maul's words found root in Ezra tempted by the dark side and letting it consume him enough to unlock the holocron. 